Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a White Lord. So this miniature is the White Lord from Heresy Miniatures. It's a great figure for RPGs and stuff. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off with Citadel Rakarth Flesh. We're going to be using this to paint up all the areas of bone and also the areas of skin, sort of his torso that you can see. I've been picking up quite a few little miniatures for Pathfinder. One of the places I've been getting them from is Heresy Miniatures, where this miniature is from. They do like a massive variety of different character type figures or villains and things like that, so it's worth checking out. I'll link them below uh, the video in case you want to have a look there, because they do sell some good individual models. Just finish off the Ricard Flesh, and then we'll come back with the next colour. Now we're adding a bit more brightness to it with a little bit of Citadel Retributor Gold. It's a lovely deep gold colour that we're using for a few of the details in the armour panels. Now there are some great details on the Heresy Miniatures as I say. Particularly like the sculpting on the heads, you'll see them when they're painted up a bit later on. They are really, really good. Now we're going to move on to Vallejo Model Air Chrome. And while the whole figure has been undercoated with Citadel Lead Belcher, I'm using the Model Air Chrome to do the armour panels so that they're a different colour once shaded than that to the chain mail. I'm using the lead belcher for the shade mail, like the normal undercoat that we've used. And we'll just be shading that, giving it maybe a little bit of a highlight and a bit of weathering. Now the next colour we're going to use is Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I find this a really nice base colour to use for zombie skin and that kind of thing. So. That's why we're using it here. We're colouring three of the corpse heads using Deepkin Flesh and then we're going to use different coloured shades on two of them just to give them a bit of variety. But it's a really nice base colour to use. Like so. Next up, it's going to be a little bit of Vallejo Beige Brown. I'm going to be using this for the hair on one of the heads. Also going to be using this on the straps on his armour. There's one strap which is really visible. I think the other one's tucked away, so you don't need to worry about that. Like so. Next up is Citadel Sycorax Bronze or Sycorax Bronze, not sure which. I'm going to be using this just to do the little emblem on his chest here. That's only being done that colour really, just to break it up so it's not the same as the rest. I didn't want to do it too much gold on him. Like so. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Ivory. I'm using this because it's a slightly off-white colour. I want to do the hair for one of the heads blonde. So we're going for three different hair colours here. I find this followed by a wash, followed by a little bit of highlighting, works quite well. We're getting a nice blonde colour to it. Carry on with that, and we'll come back once it's all done. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. This is going to be to do the final heads here. Yep, 
The only reason I've done them all different colours is just for a little bit of variety, but obviously you can choose whichever colours you want on the hair. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black. I'm going to be using this to do the belt, and there's also some straps holding on the plates on his elbows and knees. like so. Now we're going to move on to the shades. The first one that we're going to use is Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to use this for all of the areas of bone. And also we're going to use it for the blonde hair, which we painted with the Vallejo Ivory earlier on. When you look at the front of the miniature, you'll notice that there isn't too much sepia over his teeth area, and that's something which I should have really done. So you'll notice later the darkness around his teeth doesn't stand out as much as I'd like. Next, we're going to use Citadel Null Oil. We're going to use this on all the silver coloured metallics. So over the lead belcher, which is his chain mail, and also over the model air chrome and along the length of his blade. like so. Next up, Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this to go over all of the golds and also over the hair on the corpse heads. Or rather I should say the brown hair, because we've already done the blonde. Now we're moving on to Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade. We're just going to put a layer of this over the corpse heads on two of the heads. So I'm going to do this one here and then the one round the back as well. You can see the detail on those heads. Once you start painting it up as well, it does look really, really good. You've got quite a grim expression on each one of them as well. Like so. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Athonian Camo Shade by Citadel. I'm just going to use this on the remaining corpse head, just to give that a bit more of a green pallor. Now we're going back to the Rakar flesh. I'm going to start repainting all that bone. I'll very carefully do the teeth as well. Because you want each of them standing out. We're also going to go over any patches of exposed skin on the white. And 
Now we're going to mix a little bit of Deepkin flesh with the Rakarth flesh we just used. I'm just going to paint some of the areas of skin on the white. I can imagine it's all dry and pretty fettered, so you're going to be painting this up. So it's very, very pale. It's quite horrible looking. And there's the areas where the bones exposed, such as his ribs and his hands. Just going to give these a nice little coat of this and onto the next layer. Now we're going to add a little bit more deep flesh to it. We're going to do another layer of highlights on this skin. And you're just trying to pick out details and raised areas here. You're not going to give it a, a full covering. Like so. Now we're going to make another mix with a little bit of Ushabti bone from Citadel mixed with Rakarth flesh. I'm just going to do the first layer of highlights on all the exposed bone. So you've got like his fingers, his face, and his toes. Now we're going to add a little bit more Ushabti bone to the previous mix. I'm just going to highlight that bone once more. Next we're going to use a little bit of pure Vallejo white, and we're just going to paint his eyes with that. As always, you want to have the white on the very tip of the brush. I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush here, and you want to be dragging the brush away from the point along the length of the eye. Sometimes it's easier than others to do this on the eyes, but you basically want to be going in a nice straight line, dragging away from the point of the brush. Like so. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of Citadel Carrowberg Crimson, which I haven't shown here. I'm going to put that over each eye, just to redden it down. Like so. Once dry, we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo white, just to put a tiny spot of white on each eye. Rather than having the black pupil, the red around the eye and then the white dot, gives it a really nice look. Next we're going to use some Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to start working on the corpse heads again. I'm using the Wargamer character brush from Army Painter again because it's got a nice point on it. I want to try and get these heads looking quite grim and gritty. I really do like this face on this one here. Spend quite a lot of time painting that. And once you've got the first layer down, add a little bit of white to the previous deepkin flesh. They're going to do the first layer of highlights on this. 
So we're going to be trying to keep those highlights to the raised areas of the head, leaving some of the track and half nightshade in the recesses. So you're trying to get it so it would be the areas where the light is catching the skin. Like so. Next we're going to use a little bit of Citadel on the fist on red. We use that to paint up the open wound, so where the necks would have been. The open mouth too. Once we finish the hands and the hair and all that kind of stuff, we'll be coming back to bloody these up a little bit. Get a little bit of gore on there to make them look a little bit more horrible. I'm going to use a little bit of white just so we can paint on all the eyes. I do like to paint on those kind of dead staring eyes when you've got corpse heads like this. It just makes them look a little bit more miserable. A little bit more realistic as well. I can use some Citadel Drucci Violet. We're just going to be using that to go over all the areas that we've used the Mephiston Red on. So the inside of the two mouths and also the neck wounds. And finally for these heads we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black. I'm just going to put a pupil in each of the eyes. Like so. Now we're going back to Citadel Retributor Armour and we're going to start working on the gold again. So the way I work on the gold is I try and think of the areas which would be catching the light, highlight them again, but leaving some areas of the shade there because it does darken it down a little bit, gives it a little bit of a worn and weathered look. But also, it makes it look that little bit tarnished if it's a bit uneven. So on his neck, neck piece there, you could see some raised areas and a few little lumps and bumps on it. So on those, we're going to be highlighting those bits. I'm just leaving some of the, the Graxair shade in the recesses. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to start highlighting the areas that we've just reapplied the Retributor armor back to. And you can see that it does catch the light a lot using these two golds. They are really, really shiny, so it does look good once it's all finished and painted up. With the Liberator Gold, you want to be highlighting the areas that you want to get that lighter shine to. The areas which would be catching the light a little bit more. Like so. Now we've mixed a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome into the Liberator Gold. We're going to do one final highlight. So on this you want to be highlighting the edges of these big spikes going up and down his head. And you want to be highlighting the Liberator Gold as well. So you've got little touches of this really, really light gold colour in those areas. That just finishes off the shine, makes it look like it is reflecting light. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Beige Brown. I'm going to start working on the hair on one of the corpse heads. I'm 
also using this on the leather strap on the handle of his sword. And to highlight, we're going to add a little bit of white to the beige brown and just give his hair a little bit of a highlight there. And now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. And this is going to be added to the previous mix, just to do one final highlight on the hair. I'm trying to think about the areas where it will be catching the light. And you're highlighting those, so it'll be mainly the top edges. And areas where it's bulging out. Like so. Now we're returning to Vallejo Ivory. I'm going to be using this like almost a highlight on the hair because the sepia has given it that kind of nice dark blondish kind of colour. I'm just going to use this to highlight some of the strands and some of the areas. I'm not going to paint the whole thing with it. This will just add the highlights of the lighter coloured hair. Like so. Now we're going to move on to Citadel Mournfang Brown and paint the hair on the final corpse head. Like so. Now we're going to move on to a little bit of Vallejo beige brown. I'm just going to mix that in with the Mournfang brown and add a little bit of a highlight to this brown hair. It's quite a dark highlight this, mainly because I want to keep this hair a lot darker than the rest of it. So we're just going to do one little shade of that. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Air Shade. Now we're going to start tarnishing his armour and his sword a little bit. So you're not going to spread it all over, you're just trying to get it around the gaps and the grooves and the ridges in the armour. And the areas of his chainmail where it's maybe not going to rub together as much. Which would give it more of a shine. It's just grubbies him up and makes him look like he's not been too careful with all his stuff. You can probably tell he hasn't been because his armour's hanging off him. Now we're going to move on to the lead belcher from Citadel. And we're just going to give a light brush of this over the chainmail. And that's going to bring up the shine again. We're mainly going to do this on the areas where, if you think about it, ruffling around his legs and sort of like where it's worn and rubbing against other things. We're just going to try and give it a shine in those areas. Any areas where it's not going to rub on too much, we're just going to leave that tarnished and dulled. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to use this to do some nicks. And lines on his sword blade just make it look like he's been in fights and it's marked the blade and maybe chipped off some of the scum and grime that's built up on the blade itself 
We're also going to use it to go along the edges of it to give it that sharp edge look. Gonna keep adding some of these lines. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide. I'm just going to use this to tarnish up the bronze area on his chest there. And also use a little bit down the edges of the gold as well. Now I know it wouldn't really tarnish that colour, but we'll just give it a bit of an aged look. Like so. Next up, we're going to start with the gore. So we're using Citadel Carobird Crimson. We're going to be painting this in areas where we'd like the blood to be. So doing little runs from this guy's nose and mouth. And we'll do the same for the other two corpse heads. A little bit from their ears maybe. Wherever you want it to go. And then splat it around the neck wound. And then the hair as well. And what I'm doing when I'm doing the hair is thinking about where the neck wound is and where the blood would have poured out onto the hair from that. And as we've done this, we're also going to go over to the top where his hands are and paint up that too. So you can see in this part here where we've got all that gore on the hair, on his hand, on his sword blade, and on the faces of the dead. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Blood for the Blood God just to give that a nice glossy wet blood look. So we're kind of doing the strokes here as though it's running down the blade away from the cutting edge. A few drips on the gold of his hat there. Now you don't want too much so it looks a bit overdone. Just a few little drips here and there. And plenty on his sword because he's just cut three heads off. You also want to add this to the corpse heads as well where you just put the carabag crimson. Even some of the crimson showing on the edges of it. Now we've got Vallejo German Grey, which is a really dark grey colour that we're going to use to highlight the insides of the straps that are holding on his armour. So there's a few raised edges on each one of these, and you're just going to highlight them on the top side of his belt. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're just going to highlight the top edges of those straps. The top edge of his belt there. Like so. And that is the finished White Lord. I've based him using Sterland Battlemire, and when it's dried, I've just given that a quick dry brush of Citadel Mournfang Brown. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.